Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this one, we're going to be reviewing the Rode Angel doubled in stereo with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Just like there was with the dash cams, guys, there's 20% off, so use the code CRD20 to get 20% off if you're looking to buy these. So with this particular review, it's already been in the car for three months. So I wanted to give you guys a fair and honest review on it. And the way to do that was for me to experience it long term on lots of different journeys and get a good feel for the stereo and the unit. It's available in two separate versions. The DAB version, which is installed in this car, costs roughly 50 pounds more and gives you the added functionality of DAB. Whereas the standard version only has the Bluetooth, although it still, still does have the Android Auto and the Apple CarPlay. So apologies, the car is running. It's just to avoid a flat battery. So now let's jump into the review and with any good review, let's look at what's included inside the box. So we're gonna be unboxing the RA X61 Bluetooth version and I'll show you the only slight difference between this and the DAB. So inside the box, you get a instruction manual. So it basically gives you a quick start guide, shows you how to use this, use the stereo, etc. You then get these little keys. So these are removal keys for the cage on the stereo. So I'll show you that in just a moment. You get the microphone. So this is what you plug in so you can use your hands-free aspect on the stereo. You then get the ISO harness adapter. So this end goes into your ISO adapter on your car. It just basically means that it's universal, ready to go. And these two ends go into the back of the stereo. Speaking of which, here's the stereo itself. So as you can see, it's obviously got the little uh, plastic surround already attached to this. Um, it's also got the cage. So that's what I mentioned you'd use the keys to remove. So again, this is all depending on whether or not your car requires the cage or not. Mine, the one that's actually installed in the car, I had to remove the cage. And then if we look at the back of the X621 Bluetooth version, everything is pretty much the same between this and the DAB other than there's an additional DAB antenna. So I'm not sure if you can make that out there, but that's the DAB. That's where on the DAB version, there's an antenna and you can screw it in. That antenna actually looks like this. So if you are watching this video, trying to decide between the two, just keep in mind that this antenna will be on show. So this is actually the reason why I decided ultimately not to go ahead with it, um, installing it. But going back to the Back of the stereo, you can see you've got your different phono leads. Um, you've got the ability to put cameras, uh, attach a camera, have video out if you were connecting second screens, um, sub out, and then phono uh, cables there if you're connecting an amplifier, etc. This is probably the most important uh, cable. So this is effectively how you attach um, your Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So it is a wired connection. You can buy a USB adapter, which makes it wireless, but um, as I'll show you, there's plenty of cable in here that you can actually route this into your car. So I've routed it into mine and I've been happy with it so far. So everything is nicely labeled. So you can see there, Apple CarPlay slash Android Auto. So that's this USB here. And then the second one is just USB. So this is where you can basically um, connect your, let's just say a USB full of music uh, or any other things on there. So you can do that here. And then up here, we have, um, if you were to connect any more videos, cameras, etc., uh, you can plug it into here. You've then got your microphone connection, again, nicely labeled. And then a couple of other things here as well, which are all labeled, but this is usually to do with video in motion and other things, um, reverse camera, uh, etc. So you'll be tapping into those separately. I'm not going to be bothering with any of those. I haven't uh, installed that to do, I haven't installed that in my car. But hopefully this gives you a quick overview as to what's included in the box when you're buying your RAX 621 or the RAX 721 DAB version. Now that you've seen what's included in the box, you can obviously see the fitted unit here. This is on a 1993 Toyota Supra, guys. So the fitment, I have to be perfectly honest with you, is a lot better than the previous stereo I had in here. You can see I've got this base plate on here loosely um, surrounded but if I just take that off for a second just to give you an idea it does literally just clip off like so and you can see that the fit here is largely down to the fact that this is a very old car with a really strange dash panel that's in like a few different sizes but for me I just get rid of that just by putting the included side plate over the top like so and you're none the wiser 
So starting off with the stereo, you've also got your radio there, which if you go into it, you can see you've got your different frequencies. You can scan, etc. choose what you need to. I've also got the sound turned down at the moment just because I didn't want to drown out this video with static, but that's how your radio operates. The DAB, as mentioned in the unboxing part of the video, I decided not to go for that just simply because I didn't want to run an additional wire and have that on display. I personally wasn't aware that this is how DAB radios work, so had I looked into this before, I probably would have just gone for the Bluetooth version and saved myself the hassle. You've then got the USB, which is really, really cool. So what you can actually do is plug in your USB stick, like I've done, and actually have all of your old songs. So you can see you go into there and it plays um, plays your library and you can actually go into your library and basically go back out and it'll pick up the exact folder structure etc that you've got um, so you can see lots of lots of different stuff there basically just really really old songs from back in the day that I had on my PC so I really like this in fact I leave my USB permanently connected um, so the way I've got it rooted in the Supra is it's within this side glove box um, compartment so I've got it permanently connected in there and it just means, regardless of whether above or not to connect my phone through the Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, I can make use of um, some old school music. So pretty cool stuff there. You've then also got a um, auxiliary in. So if I did connect the aux cable to the back of this head unit, I would have been able to use that. And then finally, you've got um, Bluetooth functionality. So really easy to do. Um, it's literally, you just get your phone, you set up the pairing and you're good to go. You can stream your music up here just over Bluetooth. So it's got all the features that you'd expect, but if you are here watching this video, you're probably more interested in the Android Auto and the Apple CarPlay, which I'll show you in just a second. And then you've got a Bluetooth dial out. So if you didn't have Android Auto, you'd be able to come in here, use your history, use your phone book, etc. go into your contacts. Obviously right now, I've not got a phone connected to that, but you get the idea. You can use this as a complete standalone stereo. Uh, rather than relying on the uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And then on the next page, you have the option for the reverse camera, which is an optional extra. Again, this being such an old car, didn't, didn't really bother. Um, and then you've got the settings icon. So I'll just jump into there quickly, just to show you a little bit about what you can do. So you've got your little tabs at the bottom. So general settings, which we'll show you in a second, the time, sound, and the wallpaper. So I'll just quickly go to the wallpaper. It's not really much. Um, in fact, this is one of the things that I think they could improve. It'll be nice, especially as it has a USB connectivity, to actually let you upload your own wallpaper. So maybe that's one for the future, but basically it's just a different set of, of wallpapers that you can use. Again, I'm not really bothered with them because they are a bit uh, bland, if I'm honest with you. But let's now go to the general section and show you a little bit about what you can do. Uh, so you've got the brightness, you can see I've got it fully turned up at the moment, just because there is a little bit of glare. Um, as you can see, you can probably see me up there. Uh, there's a little bit of glare, so I'm trying to combat that in the video. So at least you can kind of see what's going on. In fact, let me just move a little bit closer, and hopefully that'll give you a bit of a better idea. Again, apologies guys for the glare. But basically you've got lots of different options here. Uh, your radio, etc. You can adjust all the settings, you can change your uh, language. You can then go to the time. Uh, adjust the time, pretty straightforward stuff. Go to the sound, um, so you can turn the beep on and off. You probably heard that as I've been navigating through the different menus. Um, you can change the volume, you can change the equalizer, so you can go into here. Um, I usually have this set to on, so the loud, it just makes it sound a little bit better in my car, but again, you can uh, adjust the balance between the left and the right. You can fade it from the front to the back as well. So all very common um, features that you'd expect to see on the stereo. And it's good that this has got this present because some of the cheaper ones don't. And then again, if you want to adjust the actual equalizer, if you're audiophile, you can come in here and do that. But I, again, usually just pick one of the preset ones like so, and that's usually good enough for my ears. So one of the things I want to show you in the settings, if I just jump back out to the home, and go back to settings. There is some cool stuff you can do around um, the customization. So here you can see there's a seven color light. Basically what that controls is this lights up in a certain color um, at nighttime. So when you've got your headlight switched on, it'll be a certain color. So again, I usually can come in here and just change it to blue, just because you can see up here some of the other LEDs, etc. I've got in my car. Um, are of a very similar color. 
So that gives you a general overview to the settings, guys. Now, you're probably here for the Android Auto and the Apple CarPlay functionality, so I'll quickly connect those up and show you how they work. So you can see my storage unit, guys. I've already got the cable fed there for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So you connect your USB cable, then you connect it to your phone, like so, and you can see the charging's already kicked in. And in a second, so you've got Android Auto up and running. I've blurred out the Google Maps just so my location isn't bleedingly obvious. But um, essentially, you get the idea. So you'll be able to see your normal dashboard. You'll be able to see where you are. You'll be able to see your uh, Spotify stuff down in the bottom corner. But essentially, it's your normal bog standard uh, Android Auto, so etc. So you can scroll backwards and forwards through these. A really, really easy to use overall, guys. And then over on the bottom right hand corner, you've got your audio button or your Google Assistant. So, what you can actually do is press into that and then ask Google a question. That's literally what I live for. Go ahead. That was amazing. I wasn't expecting that, but there you go. Google's literally got an answer for everything. Um, but you can see how quick everything works. So, if I just ask it, it's the weather. What's the weather like in London? Right now in London, it's 17 degrees and mostly cloudy. Today, there will be scattered showers with a forecast high of 18 and a low of nine. By the way, if you want to listen to the news while you drive, just say, hey Google, play the news. Right, so there you go. That's how Android Auto works on this unit. You can see it's really, really cool. So I'm not gonna give you a full detailed tour of how to use Android Auto. Um, you probably already know how to do that, but just look at it this way. You're gonna get your full functionality on there. If it not being wireless is a real deal, deal breaker for you, you can buy these wireless adapters, which Road End you actually sell, and that you can basically plug in and it removes the need for you to um, plug in the USB cable. Because I had a storage slot and everything's out of sight, for me, it's not been a problem at all. In fact, I actually prefer having it connected by cable, which we'll touch on at the end in the final review. Let me quickly show you how Apple CarPlay works. It's essentially the same thing, so just find your iPhone cable, plug that in. And just like that, I've got a test iPhone connected, and you can see you've got your Apple Maps, um, your Apple Music there, so don't expect too much just because I don't use an iPhone, but it's just here to show you how quick and responsive this is. And basically, if you wanted to do uh, anything that you normally do with Apple CarPlay, you can do it with the unit. So, worth mentioning at this point, the microphone that's included in the kit, I've got a very loud, old school Japanese car and I've not had any issues with it. So it's very good at picking up the sound, um, especially when you're using the assistant. So guys, now we're on to the part of the video where I'm gonna talk about what I really enjoyed about the stereo and what they could have done as an improvement or some things that haven't worked so well. So let's start with the positives. First one is I've had no major issues with this at all, right? So no lag experience in either the GPS when I'm using Android Auto or on the microphone. So really, really good stuff there. And actually I could um, go out on a limb here and say it's exactly what you expect from a uh, premium uh, product. So if you're buying Road Angel, it's obviously gonna be a little bit more expensive than some of the cheaper units out there. Certainly than the Amazon unit that I had in here from China earlier. Um, it's a lot better product, it's a lot more reliable. The uh, connection to Android Auto, so this might be down to the fact that it's over USB, but it literally connects every single time. Um, like I said, like I said earlier, to me it's not that big an issue because when you connect it by USB it charges, so I'm really, really happy with that. And I'd rather have the reliability of a connection every single time. The, the other major positive is, as shown in the unboxing part of the video, it comes with literally everything you need. So um, when you buy some of the cheaper end stereos, you still have to go out and buy the kits um, for the wiring, etc., to adapt it to your car. But this came complete with the ISO Ready um, adapter, so it was literally plug and play um, for my 1993 very old car, Toyota Supra, that I've got here. Finally, one of the things definitely worth mentioning is the well, for me, I've noticed a very good increase in sound quality, so a lot more bass, a lot more crisper sound. Now, this might be down to the fact that it's got a better amp in there, so I believe this one's a 50 watt four channel amp um, internally built in. You can, of course, go nuts and go with an external amp, but for me, I didn't want to really run that much wiring through my car, so I'm really, really pleased that this has given me enough bass that I need in my day-to-day -day life. So I'm really happy with it, and I won't need to go out and spend even more money on an expensive, um, audio setup. Now let's move on to some of the things that we don't like about it. So there's really only two 
two things that I can think of. One of them you've probably come across in the video, and um, there's a lot of glare. So I've countered this by putting the brightness up, which to be honest, as you're driving, it doesn't really annoy you at all. Um, it's just been really annoying for me to deal with as part of this video. So you can see there's my gear stick, um, there's me, hello. Um, but yeah, don't let that put you off too much on a day-to-day -day basis, but it's worth it to have a crisp screen, just like we've got here. The resolution's really, really good as well. And finally, the other aspect that I can live with, but I would have preferred it to be slightly different, are these touchscreen panel buttons over here. So where this becomes a bit of an issue is um, whilst you're driving, if you need to change the song, etc., there's nothing physical that you can just feel and press. You have to like literally take your eyes off the road very quickly and make the adjustments. So that might just be a thing with me. And to be honest, you do get used to the location of, of it after a while. But it, it's honestly, that's a preference. That's not a, that's just a design decision. It's not that the product's necessarily bad uh, for that sense. But for me, I would have just liked a, you can see I'm no, I've got plenty of buttons and uh, knobs and stuff around here anyway. So one more would have just made it easier to put the volume up and down. Again, guys, this probably isn't an issue because most of you watching this car, uh, watching this video, will have modern cars with steering wheel controls. But as you can see, I haven't got that luxury in here, so I have to literally rely on the controls. But other than that, guys, honestly, it's a fantastic product. Um, I'm really, really happy with the reliability that I've had with it. I wasn't expecting that um, to be that good. But like I said, I've tested it over three or four months um, across long journeys, short journeys, uh, mix off everywhere. Uh, and it's it's held up really really good and the just to show you the mic location that I've got is just up here and it works uh, flawlessly so if you imagine I'm start driving facing forwards um, the mic works there uh, just as well so really really good stuff and uh, just as a reminder if you are looking to purchase this and are looking for a bit of a uh, discount off it we do have the code CRD20 uh, which will give you 20% off in the meantime, if you have any more questions about it, some things that I haven't covered, uh, leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you. Make sure to give this one a fat thumbs up, guys. It really helps us out in the videos. And we'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching.